In this discussion, we will chat about the anatomy of your upper respiratory system. Very quickly, several functions of your respiratory system in general. In addition to gas exchange or quote unquote respiration, your respiratory system is also involved in speech and sound production. We have the sense of smell from the neurons within the nose itself. Your respiratory system also helps with expelling contents from your abdominal pelvic cavity to assist with defecation, urination, and childbirth. We do this by increasing the pressure in the thoracic cavity. Um, that's one you may have not really thought about before, but your respiratory system can help you go to the bathroom or give birth. The pressure changes within the thoracic cavity also assist with the flow of venous return as well as lymph return in both the thoracic and the abdominal pelvic cavities. We have briefly mentioned those previously in other recordings, but that's just a little reminder. And then we have the acid-base balance of extracellular fluid. Um, this one is going to come up a lot. Acid-base balance is really a big deal. Um, so we are going to want to keep that one in the back of our minds. Anytime you see anything about acid-base balance, put a star by it, highlight it, circle it, do something because it's a big deal. Um, your respiratory system also assists with the uh, synthesis of enzymes involved in the production of angiotensin II. We have repeatedly mentioned angiotensin um, II in previous discussions on the maintenance of blood pressure. It will also uh, help with the regulation of fluid homeostasis, so angiotensin II will also come up a couple of more times. All right, so we are going to focus on your upper respiratory tract first. We'll start with the nose. You have both an external and an internal portion to your nose. The external portion of your nose is composed of your nasal bones and a little bit of cartilage. On the outside, it is covered with skin. On the inside, it is lined with mucous membranes. We have two openings. We call these your external nares. Most people just call them your nostrils. This is where air intake occurs. The internal portion of your nose, um, the air that we breathe in through the nostrils will enter your nasal cavity, which is divided into lefts and rights by your nasal septum and the perpendicular plate. Within the internal portion of your nose, we also have afferent sensory neurons, which run through your olfactory foramina of the cribriform plate located on your ethmoid bone, and I know that's a mouthful. These afferent sensory neurons send information to your brain, which allows us to smell. Okay, so these are your little um, smelly neurons. This is how we smell things. And then your nasal cavity itself, um, in addition to being divided into lefts and rights by the nasal septum, we also separate the nasal cavity from your oral cavity by your palate, both your hard and your soft palate. As air moves through the nasal cavity posteriorly, um, it will move through the internal nares onto the nasopharynx. Now, what do we need a nose for? Okay, besides breathing in the air, what else are we going to do with the air? We're going to filter the air. Your little nose hairs trap larger particles and the mucus um, coming from your mucous membranes traps dust, bacteria, and other smaller debris. The cilia within the membranes uh, are also going to sweep that mucus into the pharynx for swallowing, which kind of sounds gross and that kind of is, but it just is what it is. We're also going to warm the air that's coming in. We do this with um, the veins in the nasal mucosa. Okay, they provide a little bit of heat there. And we are also going to humidify the air through the mucous membranes and the serous secreting epithelial tissue that you find within the nose itself. Um, it's pretty important to warm and humidify the air as it comes in. Um, we don't want to shock your respiratory system with really, really cold or really, really dry air. Um, smell, we did just mention smell. Those olfactory receptors are going to line the epithelium of the roof of your nasal cavity. Um, we are going to send that information down cranial nerve one. Okay, so you may or may not remember your cranial nerves, but cranial nerve number one was your olfactory nerve. 
Um, that information is going to go to your temporal lobe, the olfactory area of your temporal lobe for processing, and we can figure out what exactly we are smelling. Hopefully it is a pleasant smell, but as you know, it's, it's not always pleasant. Your paranasal sinuses, um, these are hollow cavities within several of your bones. You've got your maxilla, your ethmoid bone, your sphenoid bone, and your frontal bones. Um, you've got holes in your head, y'all. These hollow cavities are connected to your nasal cavity by small little passageways. This also helps with the warming and humidifying of the air that we mentioned just a second ago. They also help enhance your voice resonance and they reduce the weight of your skull as well. Um, the voice resonance, you are probably familiar with that because if you have ever had a um, sinus infection or just congestion in your sinus area, you probably noticed that your voice sounded a little bit funny and that is why, okay? We're not getting that resonance um, like we normally do when the cavities are, yeah, when the cavities are hollow, okay? Because if you're suffering from some sort of infection or congestion, you've got bacteria, mucus, and all that kind of stuff getting in the way.